It's the 22nd of June, 1942. The rear echelon of the 1st Marine Division is leaving San Francisco, bound for New Zealand, Wellington. We're passing under the Bay Bridge at the moment. And uh, then the Oakland, then the uh, Golden Gate Bridge, and out into the Pacific. Our ship is the uh, Kung Som, now called the uh, Hunter Liggett. And we have the assistant division command on board. I was on the photographic section, so was part of that group. And we had a 22-day trip to Wellington, New Zealand. We saw uh, no life, no islands, no birds, no people, no ships, no nothing for 22 days to Wellington. We were way off the shipping lanes, and good thing, too, because we had very little protection. We had these 20-millimeter double guns mounted. We had some howitzers on deck. I don't know what they thought they were going to do with those. There's a 105 there, and, of course, the deck guns on the ship. And <laughs> this is the way we went, uh, calm seas most of the way. We departed on the 22nd of June. We arrived in uh, Wellington on the 14th of July, crossed the equator on the 1st of July. And uh, here's uh, General Colonel Del Valle on the left, General Rupertus on the right, with the captain of the ship in the center. General Rupertus was the assistant division commander. Colonel Del Valle, later General Del Valle, was in command of the 11th Marines, the artillery regiment. We had about uh, 12 or 14 ships in the convoy, and uh, we saw no, we had no escort, uh, nothing, until we arrived in Wellington. And here we are. Wellington, of course, is at the southern end of the North Island. The wind blows here a great deal, as Colonel Cates in the foreground, the Macaulay off to our right, and we're coming into the port. We were supposed to get off here and spend about six months in training, but our orders had been changed while we were at sea, and now we're going to have only 10 days to take everything off, combat load the ships, and start off for Guadalcanal. Only, of course, they hadn't told us where we were going. Well, the, div the intelligence section knew, we knew, but most of the division didn't. Here's General Rupertus, General Vandegrift, the commanding general, Major Murray, the no, that's, uh, I don't know who that is. Here's Kilmartin on the right. All the top brass down to greet us as we came in with, and they had the news for us, of course, that we were going to go right out again. But the first thing to do was to get the men off the ships and get them out of town and into camp so that the loading could begin. This was early in the war. Now, you notice that we have 1903 Springfield rifles. So this is uh, sort of ancient history. There's sea bags, backpacks, the whole business. No uh, fatigues yet. These are just our regular green uniforms. Leaving, this is Aotea Key and the heart of Wellington Harbor. This is PFC Steckler. He was one of my boys. <laughs> I wish he wouldn't smoke, but anyway. And out of town away is uh, Camp Paikakariki, good as New Zealand word, about 25 miles out, as I recall. And these dog houses, as they called them, is where we were supposed to live. New Zealand band was on hand to greet us. And uh, it worked out very well, except that we weren't there very long. We no sooner got into camp than uh, had to turn around and go out again. Uh, I lived on the ship because we were doing the transloading, and we had our our camera equipment and all our mapping devices, mapping equipment set up. And the only way we could get any power was to run a line over the side and plug into a socket on the dock. We didn't have any generators of our own. So we were making maps and doing photographs the whole time while the uh, unloading and combat loading proceeded. Meantime, most of the division was in camp here at Paikakariki, also up at Camp Anderson on the hills above, and uh, it went quite quickly. It was 10 days. It rained practically all the time. We had a lot of damage to equipment and supplies from the rain, but eventually we got the ships reloaded. This is at General Vandegrift's house, the uh, 
Colonel Hunt there on the right, the commander of the 5th Marines. Boy, some of the names have gotten away from me in 50 years. I can't understand that. And here we are, 10 days later, the combat loading is completed. The troops are recalled from Paikakariki, and we go aboard ship, this time for the trip up to Guadalcanal. We're going to stop uh, partway in the Fiji Islands for some a dress rehearsal, which was a disaster, by the way. And so here we are, Aetia Key, loading up. We have now the better part of the division here, probably 10, 12,000 men. We don't see any signs of the chaos on the dock. It was really a mess. It rained so hard and so long and so consistently, but eventually it stopped and we were loaded and on the way. We had a problem because the longshoremen were on strike and wouldn't load the ships in wartime, mind you, and uh, the authorities put a stop to that, but there was a delay for a short while. Took us all day to load the troops, and uh, then we took off for points north. I've had several people remark the equipment looked pretty primitive. Well, it was. It was 1903 rifles and <laughs> 1920s, 1930s gear. Here we are now. We're headed north from Wellington. Uh, we'll soon be out of sight of land on our way to the Fiji Islands. And now for the first time we ran into some rough weather. We also had a combat escort with us. And this went on for about three days. I've forgotten the name of most of the ships, but there were 12 or 14 of them. Crescent City there behind us. Radio silence, of course. Guard mail was carried by destroyer between the various ships. This is the destroyer uh, transferring mail, I believe, to the Alchiba, which was uh, carried a lot of munitions, among other things. We didn't want to get too close to that one. Well, it went on like that for about a week, going up to Fiji. And at Coral Island, uh, we had a dress rehearsal. The problem was that they didn't know much about the reefs, and we damaged some of the landing boats, and they had to call the whole thing off after a while and just hope that there wasn't any problem farther on. Here's the rendezvous with the fleet. This was the first uh, time we saw any large number of uh, combat ships. The Juno, there's an aircraft carrier way over there on the left. This was a Sunday, and we felt that with a force like that, we could go right to Tokyo. Well... <laughs> was a nice thought, but of course it wasn't very practical. The uh, landings, as I said, were a disaster. There's an anti-aircraft cruiser there in the distance, destroyer in the foreground. Again, guard mail going back and forth. Very pleasant temperatures here, by the way. We didn't have any problem with that. And the weather was good, but um, we just didn't know about the beach and the reef and the landings were awkward. Well, eventually we took off there and uh, went on up to Guadalcanal, and we had cloudy weather, very low clouds and poor visibility the whole way, for which, of course, we were delighted. And then on the 7th of August, we came into Guadalcanal. Here's one of the old destroyer transports. Uh, that might be the, I don't know which one that is, the uh, they t took out one of the some of the boilers and made it to carry about 200 troops. This is the actual landing now on uh, Guadalcanal. We're in the bay, standing off Lunga Point, about 6:15 in the morning. Cruiser alongside. I think that was the Juno. Had a few planes in the air. They were all American, no Japanese at this point, which pleased us. Little trouble there. Uh, we picked up the pilot. Everything was fine.
These films were put together in headquarters Marine Corps uh, without any real notes. Our notes were lost, so they had to make up their own minds about what things were. But this is the initial bombardment at Lunga Point. About 6.14 in the morning, the Quincy fired the first rounds. And now the boats are alongside. We're going to load up and head for shore. Fifth Marines, First Marines going in. We started loading about uh, 6.30 and uh, actually went ashore, I think, about 9 o'clock. Destroyers went in pretty close for some of the bombardment. Now these are the old original Higgins boats. You notice most of them have no ramp, and we had to jump down over the front of them. Place for two machine guns in the front. But it was a slow process at best. There's the Macaulay over there. Ships circling. Here we are, firing across the way, some of the rounds falling short. That's off Red Beach, there's the Juno again. We had a couple of uh, air alerts. Didn't see any planes though the first day. The Japanese were caught completely by surprise. So this firing doesn't mean much of anything. We have no pictures of the actual landing. I had two cameramen when they hit the beach. Some officers said, put your camera down and do something constructive. So we have no pictures of the landing. But it was a calm day. There's Savo Island in the background. General Rupertus, again on the left. Colonel Kilmartin. Now we're going ashore. Division, Assistant Division Command didn't get ashore till quite a bit later. General Rupertus went to Tulagi. Here's a B-17 that flew over. They weren't much help to us at that point. Good for long-range reconnaissance, aerial photography. Of course, at that time, there was no place for him to land on the island. So here are the boats lining up. We're going in. And these pictures are actually army troops coming ashore uh, much later in the campaign. Again, the old Higgins boats, no ramps. Notice they have M1 rifles. We didn't. They also are carrying gas masks, which we didn't think much of. Uh, this shot is the actual landing at Tulagi. Just one scene taken by PFC Hans. Now we're back at Guadalcanal, the amphibious tractors. We had very few of those. Of course, they were brand new at that time. And here we are on the beach. 